So, hi everybody. <laughs> I am curated Kotlin, and um, as you can see, it's my karma, and clicker doesn't work. So I would stand right here and without going anywhere, and yeah, clicking the slides. So I am credit at Kotlin, and uh, you may know me from some technical talks about multi-platform because it's my passion, and I used to work for a long time there. But now I'm leading QA, and uh, for the first time. In the history, I gonna tell some story about our internal quality assurance processes, not some development things. So, if you like it, make sure to vote for the talk because otherwise we wouldn't have it anymore. <laughs> so today we are going to talk about regressions, uh, and for the begin to begin with, I would uh, do a little introduction into the history of Kotlin. Uh, then I'll tell you why exactly we have chosen the regressions to fight with, and uh, well, how did it go and what were the results. So Kotlin has a really long story. We had initial commit in 2010, and a year later we got uh, the first blog post about Kotlin. And um, in 2016, in 16th, we had uh, Kotlin 1.0. Ever since, we had really, really fast ways. We were moving forward fast to deliver the features to our users. We were excited, our users were excited, and we wanted to deliver as much as we could. So in 2020, August, we had Kotlin 1.4. What is so special about this release? Well, probably this one. We have created those t-shirts when we have finally released Kotlin 1.4. The trust about this t-shirt is that the first and the last dates are real. So we had a delay of almost of half of a year because because we had to change something. We were not startup anymore. We had to streamline our processes to be more predictable for our users, and actually to be more predictable for ourselves as well, to, be, to continue to be more productive. And we knew that not only us changed, our users changed. We were not only enthusiasts anymore, you were developers who use Kotlin as a tool. And when you use a tool, you want it to be stable. So this is how the quality became the first and foremost priority of Kotlin. And uh, therefore, we wanted to be stable as much as possible. So why regressions? As I said, stability is crucial. and um, and we are talking about it. We could remember that every single Kotlin release has a hotfix. This, was, this is the story for all the Kotlin releases except 1.3.50. For some miracle reason, this hadn't hotfix release. And this is a bad practice because this is a bad sign of uh, instability. And when we are talking hot, about hotfix releases, so, Main reason of those is usually regressions. Therefore, we need to eliminate the regressions to eliminate the probability of a hotfix release. So we would be stable. So how did it begin? In 2022, we have decided that we need to fight the regression specifically. We didn't have any specific process general for the entire team before that. So we began with the goals definition. And we have evaluated where we are right now. We took the history of three years of regressions before that. You can see this graph. And you can also see that the trend is not really encouraging. So. We have realized where we are, 
and uh, then we have decided what are the goals. First of all, we of course wanted to reduce the number of regressions. Secondly, we wanted to react timely. That means that we don't want to release anything with already submitted regressions, which we could fix before the release, but we haven't looked into our tracker and haven't realized that we do have those regressions. So from now on, we wanted to react to any, every single submitted regression within a week. And uh, of course, to prevent hotfix releases, we have to find the most of the regressions, if not all, before the release. So, how do we do that? To reduce the number of regressions, we have introduced the practice of the root cause analysis. It this means that when a developer fixes critical or major regression, they have to provide a root cause analysis. The main goal of this is not like pointing fingers to somebody. It's more about why our quality gates have allowed us to what this regression who uh, have allowed this regression to make it to the release? What can we improve to avoid such regressions in the future? And of course, also of course, we have established our analytics team has established uh, the monitoring of the situation about the regressions. Secondly, we wanted to react timely, as I said, within a week. So we have created a special process and a Slack bot which would help the developers keep the track on this process. And uh, to respond to regressions early, it's always about preventive measures. And from the root cause analysis, we actually could get some action points to improve our system and then have less of regressions. And of course, it's about more quality gates, more checks, more automation, and so on. So, how did we implement it? As I said, we have analytics in place, and also we have the Slack bot. And you know, when you decide to begin a new life from the Monday, you still have something which you already lived with. So we had in our tracker already a lot of open regressions. We didn't have any specific process before. And uh, by the time we began this journey and began this with this Slack bot, we had 150 regressions, which from now on would block every single release, be it release candidate or stable release. And um, yeah, of course, we couldn't stop the world, so we had a transition period. This, is, this was in May, and we had the transition period before, uh, until uh, the end of July. Right, so how did it go? First, it was the speed of regressions reducing was really good. So we have uh, halved this number in June already. But then it slowed down. So by the deadline, we still had 50 regressions which would block the release. That was the time of 1.7.20. And uh, actually, thanks to this process as well, we have spotted some language design issue which didn't allow us to release 1.7.20 in time. So we had special attention to regressions and some problem rela problems related to that, and we had to delay the release by the month. So the team had also some time to fix the, left, the 50 regressions left. And indeed, in September, we've got only six open regressions, be it major or critical regressions in our tracker. And ever since, we have this number really low. So it's like, from two to six or seven, it's usual. So this is about the control and uh, the processes. Now, the last thing. So when we have introduced this process, I have read, uh, wrote and uh, written um, 
a really long guide about handling the regressions for the developers because we have introduced something new and uh, I have to explain why and I have to explain what exactly I, I am waiting for from the developers. But this, that was like 10 minutes reading long and you know, not everybody has this time. So we ended up with this short scheme of the regressions handling to make sure everybody is up to date and uh, is able to follow this. So, so what were the results? Of course, I have to say that um, the regressions topic as, my, as well as the quality itself is really complex. And uh, not only those measures affect the number of regressions we've ha we have encountered. Uh, we had also created, uh, by that specific legendary release, we have created the release team which would specially manage the release processes. So this affected this, uh, the number as well. But the fact is that this, this is a graph of uh, two years ago, or from, of two years uh, ago and now. So if we would look to the first part, it's uh, the year before we have started doing some, something specific about regressions. And we had 437 regressions. And this is the last year, from March to March. And from the last year, we had only 318 regressions. Well, it's still a lot, but the trend is good. So we have reduced the number of regressions for almost 30%. And before I would wait to you to go to lunch, let's wrap it up. So fighting regressions is a really complex topic, and um, it doesn't go smooth always. And uh, of course, it's not the only thing we have to improve with our, about our quality. We are moving forward about uh, with it, and especially with K2 right now. So we have decreased the number of regressions for 119 per year, and I hope the trend will be this encouraging as well. So I still believe we could have no hot fixes at least as a rule. And well, of course, it takes time and patience. You can not just cut it out and start living new life. That's it. Thank you very much. And uh, just like as Igor said, don't forget to visit our JetBrains booth, please. I would also be there for some time if you have any questions. Thank you.